Welcome back, everybody. This is going to be a tutorial on bushes, as voted on by the community, I should point out. Uh, every so often, I like to post little community tab polls and saying, hey, guys, what's some of the tutorials you guys want to see next? You know, and the, the winner of this one is bushes. So we're going to be continuing our foliage line of tutorials. First one we did was grass and then a sprout. And now we're going to do a little more complex shape, bushes. As usual, the brush we're going to be using is the hard round pressure opacity brush. It's just a hard round brush, one of the basic brushes on every program, and it might be named something different depending on whatever program you're in, but I promise you the round brush is there. I'm able to determine how opaque or transparent the brush is depending on how soft or how hard I brush. And you can also have size turned on if you really want to, but I usually don't. And so to start, we are just going to grab a medium green, one of, a, of our green from our foliage palette here, which you can just screen cap and like just grab these colors if you want to. We need to determine the shape of our bush. Now these are gonna be stylized bushes. It's nothing fancy. It's just some cool shapes and fun little, you know, features and stuff like that. So do we want a more pointy bush with like a point somewhere? Or do we want a more round bush? That's a little you know, more circular in pattern. That's something you have to determine going into this. And so personally for me, I think we're gonna go with a round bush. So we are going to continue the use of our lovely lasso tool, which is L in Photoshop, the hotkey, but if not, it's right up here. And yours might be set to one of these other ones, but if you click and hold, you'll be able to get to the just regular lasso tool, which we don't need to do and need to find corners just yet. We're just gonna get a basic kind of more organic shape. So first let's start with a shape, just a simple, Boom. Now, if we hold down shift, you should see on your cursor a little plus sign right next to the uh, the little lasso. That means if we do something over here, it'll add to the shape. And alternatively, if you hold down alt or option on a Mac and you do another shape, it'll cut into the shape that you already got. So now we're gonna hold down shift and we're gonna start adding in little random leaf patterns. When I say random, I, I mean random. <laughs> Just get your hand, stiffen up your hand, but then control the movement of your brush and pen with your arm. Just keep your hand stiff and just kind of jostle your arm around a little bit. This is just one of the easiest ways I've found to get your random patterns. And we don't want anything to look like it was it was meant to be. Like you don't want anything to look round like it was a circle originally. But now let's get our brush and let's fill that in. And now we've got a silhouette. Let's take a look at this. It's pretty good, pretty good. Uh, there are some things that don't make sense and there will be uh, with your bush. So if we look at this, these leaves could happen, but for a typical stylized kind of bush, rounded edges like this are something we're gonna have to sort of brush out. If you'll notice, this has a bit of a round bit too right there, which is common because we're just, just moving our arm around. So let's add in some more sharpness to it. We're gonna just ba do a basic shape and then we're gonna hold down shift. We're gonna just cut a few more shapes in here. And we're just looking for anything that looks too boring. The rule of the rules, I should say, of stylized work are shapes within shapes, the rule of cool, and don't be boring. Shapes within shapes is kind of like what we're doing right now, where we're cutting in shapes inside or originally based off of our initial shape, which was the circle. The rule of cool means it doesn't necessarily have to make sense, like it doesn't have to actually be like anatomically correct or physically correct if you if you if you want but the only way you can actually pull that off is if it looks cool if it doesn't look cool then you should probably stick to how things are supposed to be all right now let's add in those by brushing that in it's looking a little better a little better i like it it's a good starting point i'm down now let's grab a darker green and we're going to make a clipping mask so we're going to hit the new layer we're going to right click the new layer do create clipping mask and it's going to make a clipping mask over our previous silhouette which means anything we paint will only show up on the mask it's clipped to. Now we're gonna get a soft round brush. Again, a basic brush that's in every program. And it might be the same brush, by the way. You might just have to turn down the sharpness. In Photoshop, the way you do that is you hold down shift and you hit the bracket keys. And now I have made this soft brush into a hard brush by hitting the right bracket. So I'm gonna hold down shift and press the left bracket key. And that is now a soft brush. And we are just going to brush in the bottom. Typically speaking, I like the light source in these tutorials to be on the top left. So the top left of our image is going to be the brightest and the bottom right will be the darkest. Make sure your eraser is the same as your brush. It's pretty good, pretty good starting point so far. Now I'm gonna take my brush and pick the, if not the lightest color then the second lightest color or just the lighter than your base color. And we're gonna kind of put in the light source around the edges. So it gives you a chance for the leaves on the edges to catch some rim light, but also the bulk 
where the light is gonna hit, so the top left of your image, or in our case, a bush. And then if you want, you can click around and kind of blend the colors together. I'm using my eyedropper here by pressing Alt and holding it, and I'm grabbing the color that my eyedropper lands on. And you can just do this until you've got a nice, interesting blend. And then you can shrink your brush, and then we can add in patches, just little, little patches of bright in the dark area and a little patches of dark in the bright area. But again, don't forget the rules. Don't be boring is a rule that I say a lot, which means a predictable. So for example, if there's a patch here, 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 where do you think the next patch is gonna be? Right there. <laughs> That is predictable, that is boring. Predictable is bad. It's also why you wanna vary the size of your brush often when you do these things. And this is just the initial preliminary stuff. We're about to make this thing a lot more interesting as you saw in the preview image in the very beginning of the video. Here's our first, our first look of the bush is beginning to be revealed. Find out next time on Dragon Ball Draw. I'm, I'm gonna get the brightest color and I'm gonna start patching the tops of those bumps in. If you take a step back, if you zoom out from your bush, you can kind of start to see the bush already take shape in your mind. So imagine these bumps as actual 3D bumps. So this, for example, would be its own bump. I'm gonna shrink the brush here. You can see there's a darker part of the bump and a lighter part of the bump. Now we can just add a touch of bright, 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 bright green, almost yellowish green, because we got sunlight, you see, at the top of the bump, very gently. So at the very tops of some of these bumps near the top of our main bush, we're going to add a touch of the really, really bright. We're gonna shrink our brush down to a little bit. We already have some rim light. We do a little bit of rim light on just the leaves of just some of the bush here. We don't wanna go all the way down. We don't wanna highlight the entire bush, unless, at that, unless that's needed in your scene, your painting. But we don't need to do it to start off in this particular scene, you feel me? Now, usually I save the shadows and stuff for the extra credit, but I'm going to add a shadow now, because that really just, it's hard to talk about bushes which are attached to the ground without talking about, you know, the shadows they form. So beneath our main layer, I made a new layer. We're gonna go down here to multiply. So we're gonna grab a dark green, and we're just gonna touch just a bit of the bottom, and then we're gonna drag that out a bit to the right. So we can have an actual shape. And it makes it look like it's a, an actual thing living in the world. Not necessarily living, but you know what I mean. I mean, yeah, the bushes are alive. What am talking about? We're just gonna ease up a bit of the shadow on the far end and clean up the shadow that's kind of peeking out over here. All with a soft brush, all with a soft brush. All right, that's a decent, that's a decent enough shadow for what we need. We can move back on because now we know the thing lives in our world. It is, it is reacting to our environment. So now I think we're gonna make a new layer just for, just for cleanliness. And now we can start working more with those lasso tools again. All right, so we are going to make leaf shapes. Now leaf shapes, if you remember from our previous grass tutorials, look like so. They have almost like a teardrop kind of look, except to the very end with this nice little point. Might be easier to see if I pick a better green for you. There we go. That's a leaf shape. Now when you add leaf shapes together, they look like that. So we're gonna be doing that <laughs> just a bit. So we're gonna come here, see here's our circle, remember? We have little bulbs, little 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 bulbs that are kind of poking out that have their own shadow and their own light. We're gonna go to the top of those, actually, and we're gonna start from the bottom moving upward. So we're gonna grab a couple leaf shapes. Remember to hit hold down shift. Now with our soft brush, we're gonna grab a dark green. We're gonna start putting those in there. Now, depending on how far up the shadows, which these are shadows, how far up they are on the bush, we can sort of use the colors nearby to make them a more light appropriate shadow. Meaning if they're closer to the light source, the shadows won't be as deep and as dark. But if they're farther away, they're going to be quite dark. Those are our first shadows. Now let's add in our highlights. So we're gonna paint on top of these shadows. We made the shadows for a reason. So we are going to paint on most of this, but we're gonna leave some shadows sticking out. So now we're going to grab the highlight color nearest our shadow. And we are going to carefully blend 
this into our bush, which means the color closest to the edge on the other side is the color we want to be over on this side. The color closest to the outside of our selection, we want to be on the inside of the selection, wherever that is, except near the end. The tips here need to be a little lighter. And we could brush this in, brush that back, and kind of give them a, a bit of line kind of feel, but it's gonna be gentle. We do things subtle around here until we don't. <laughs> and that is roughly what you should be ended up with. Now I can see a bit of a difference here, a bit of line, and we can just Without the, we don't need to have the selection tool right now, but we can keep our brush kind of big and we could just blend that in and blend it back very carefully, not to get over any areas that we want to maintain. And don't get too close, by the way. I'm only doing this because I know what I'm doing. <laughs> Usually I would suggest stay far enough so you can see the whole image if you can, especially in the beginning stages. So we are going to be doing this throughout all of these, right? Grab our brush, get a light one, kind of brush towards the tips of all these leaves that we've kind of drawn. And right here, they're pretty close. I'm gonna have to fix those in a bit. But right now, I'm just focusing on the tips. Remember, you want these to blend near the back of the leaves. You want the tips to be bright, but you want the back of the leaves to blend. So I gotta be careful with these leaves because they're pretty close and my soft brush will bleed into them because they're part of the same selection, see? Keep your brush about the same size as the leaves themselves. lasso off and we start to find these little lines and then we just blend those lines out blend them into the bush but if we zoom out you can start to see your bush sort of taking shape with a bit of texture to it If you want to freehand some leaves, that's totally cool too. Just get your brush kind of small, as small as the leaf. And then when you're ready, shrink your brush even more to define that shape. And just remember, keep the back kind of fuzzy, but sharpen the tip. Make sure to give it a bit of shadow. And sharpen any corners between other leaves that you've already drawn. Right, 
Now let's soften up some of these shadows. We don't need the shadows to be very hard. If you're really worried, you could definitely just use your lasso tool again and trace over those leaves and then draw outside that. And the way you do that is you just make a shape, right click it, and do select inverse. And now instead of painting inside the shape, you're painting outside the shape. And we can fix these corners that we've made. Remember, just keep your brush kind of small to give yourself a bit of detail. And make your brush bigger when you want it to blend into previous detail. But the shadows near the tips of the leaves should be kind of fuzzy because they're lower down. Notice, all we're really doing is just changing the shape or changing the size of our soft brush and we're, we're using the eyedrop tool a lot. That's because the colors have drastically changed from this up here all the way down to these and these shadows. So to make sure that you're doing this accurately, you're going to want to make sure that if you've got shadows down here, you, you grab these shadows colors, so you paint with them. But if you got shadows up here, you grab these shadows colors and you paint with them. Because if I use these shadows colors down here, they're way too light. Now, if you wanted to make some other shadows, we could do the same technique before. Make some leaf-like shapes. But this time we would right-click it and do select inverse. And we could just grab our soft brush, grab a shadow color, and paint near the edge of the inside of our leaves. And then we could grab the color nearby to soften them up. That's another perfectly fine way to make leaves. It's many people's favorites way, in fact. And they might have been very upset at me for not mentioning that beginning. I've made leaves like that several, several times. But if I want to make sure that you all have a comprehensive view of how to use the lasso tool to make leaves in various ways, I gotta tell you all the different ways that make leaves. Otherwise, I'm not teaching you nothing. I'm just gonna make my brush kind of big and I'm just really gonna clean up this bush. This is pretty messy and I don't necessarily like bushes messy. By messy I mean there's a lot of little brushwork you can still subtly, very subtly see like that. So I'm just gonna clean those up a bit. It's good to have some little extra lines and textures never hurt anybody and you can even add a few as long as you're careful. The main thing you want to make sure you always have in these pieces is stylistic consistency, meaning everything looks like it was made the same way. give the illusion of these leaves in the end here. I'm just going to take some of them and on the top of them we're going to bring that light up and into the bush and near the bottom we're going to take that shadow a bit and drag it along the bottom just a little just a little bit. Notice, while we're doing this, there's a couple things that immediately stand out. One, this bottom is too boring, too smooth. We're gonna have to chop that up. And up here, we got a weird predictable leaf pattern. So we're gonna add some to that real quick. Get our lasso tool, make some leaf shapes, make sure they're different sizes. And anywhere you see a line that continues, like this line right here, you wanna break that up. So now 
now we're going to grab the colors near these leaves. So now make sure you're on the main layer and we're gonna grab the colors near these leaves. And we're going to paint those in, making sure to always grab the colors near the leaves. It's looking better already. Now let's chop up this bottom section here. We don't want any of it to look like it's still part of a pattern. I'm just gonna erase that. Ah, there we go, look at that, nice. But now I am going to make that bottom area a little darker. Make sure the soft round brush is equipped. Start painting in the darkest color we got, just at the bottom. What's cool is the layer above it has the leaves on it, so it'll preserve any of the leaves and leaf shadows that we've already painted. But I think I'm gonna move these a bit to match the shadow of our bush, the shadow of our bush a bit. And if we need to, we can always add more shadow. I think that's pretty good. Nice little fun basic bush, a little bit of stylization to it. Our, our basic stylized bush should be good. Now I'm just gonna add a bit of that extra credit we talked about, and I'm just gonna add some sun and it's uh make make it look all pretty. So give me a sec. go there's your basic stylized bush hope you had fun hope you learned something leave a like if you like it a dislike if you dislike it subscribe to see more hopefully that was useful helpful or entertaining and thank you so much to my amazing patrons i appreciate the ever loving out of you for supporting the ever loving out of me and i'll see you in the next video take care